Good morning. We uh, have got quite an exciting day ahead, haven't we? We are. We have. <laughs> we have. Yes. <laughs> we have a Marks and Spencer's gift voucher, and we've decided to go and buy a frying pan. <laughs> so, so you can follow us on our adventures today. Um, I am doing a just a quick catch up. You, this is probably backwards. Yeah. Um, I'm reading Night Boat to Tangier by Kevin Barry at the moment and the plan is to finish it today. I haven't got a huge amount to go. So this was um, long listed for the Booker Prize last year. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I like Kevin Barry. I really enjoyed um, Beetle Bone, his previous novel. He reminds me a lot of J.P. Donlevy. I'm not sure if people are familiar with him. It's so... Um, unique in what he's doing that I think he's just some of the lines are just so great I mean like literally every line is packed um so it can be a bit much um but yeah loving it hopefully um I will finish that today what are you reading Shani oh I'll update in a bit I've just finished I finished the new Otesha Moss oh yeah yeah which is good I was just popping in to sort of say about this place there's no beard Oh yeah, um, I was having issues with my beard, <laughs> so as I, uh, as I want to do, I uh, had to get rid of it so I can start growing it. Again. What a cute little funny face I've got, <laughs> isn't it really? Cute wonky face. Yeah. Yeah. So my wonky nose means that I, my glasses are permanently wonky, and um, <laughs> there I am with a little moustache and a little bear. So what can you do when you look like this, really? I know. Just enjoy it, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of cold and windy, isn't it? It is a bit, yeah. I just sent my dad for his birthday present. I sent him two books. Sent him the woman in the uh, what's it called? The woman in the Arctic. But you're living in the Arctic. Yeah. Christian Ritter. And I've also sent him the new childhood one, the Jared Reeve. Yeah. Here's my new scarf, uh, but it's wearing his jumper. Um, we don't have a frying pan, <laughs> <laughs> but this is nice, huh? Anyway, um, here's my reading update. Um, I finished The Men in My Life by Patricia Bosworth, which was from my TBR jar, so well done me. And um, it was a memoir, and I enjoyed it. I found it kind of really readable. Um, there's lots of really good stories in it, so if you like stuff about kind of 50s movie stars, so, you know, like she gets in a cab, well, it's not even a cab, it's like a, a car that someone's driving, and um, Marilyn Monroe's sitting in the back. She goes on a um, on a motorcycle with Steve McQueen. Um, she's in a movie with Audrey Hepburn, and then Audrey Hepburn asks her to go and have tea with her. So it's like full of really interesting kind of little stories. Um, but I... I didn't think it was that amazing. It was fine written. It was like the writing didn't bother me, but it didn't kind of take it next level. So I gave it three in the end. There was a couple of bits um, that I wasn't into where she was kind of talking 
she sort of kept in her mind talking to her dead brother and I didn't feel they were particularly convincing. I didn't necessarily feel that she did that. I felt like she just did it for the book. Although obviously she might have done that. But anyway, didn't like those bits. But it was interesting if you like those kind of, you know, fun little stories. And then the other one, Hold and Red, is Atesha Moshbeg's um, Death in Her Hands. And this is a proof because it comes out 23rd of April. And we only got a proof because um, Bert used to work in Waterstones and then someone who works in a different Waterstones had two copies, so sent it to Bert and then Yay. I stole it. <laughs> 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 um, so I did really enjoy reading this. I just read it really quickly because it's kind of super compelling and I really like Atesha Mosfeg's Atessa. I always call her, want to call her Atesha Mosfeg. Um, I really like her writing style, so I really enjoyed it. It's like a quite a weird character again. Um, it's got very similar um, themes to Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead, like weirdly similar. And I feel like there must be, is she doing a, like, a homage to that? Because there's a older lady in a cabin in the woods on her own with a dog and there's possibly a dead body. So it's kind of real similarities so I'm kind of interested in what that's about not and I don't feel in in a like a plagiarizing way or in a more like a yeah homage mm. I don't know oh and Blake it's got lots about Blake in it so mm. I feel like those can't be that can't be a coincidence no. can it? I don't know but I really enjoyed it the um it, I feel like her books kind of stay with you and I think the end was a bit like huh? what's going on you know or the whole thing was a bit like yeah huh? So I'm waiting for Bert to read it and for everyone else to read it and then we can talk about it a bit more. I think it's one of those ones that you can't talk about that much. Not that it's super plotty, but it's nice to go in a little bit fresh. <laughs> I'm going to go in fresh. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any questions for me about those books, Bertie? Mm. When are you going to pick your next uh, TBR jar picks? Well, March. All oh, right, it's not till then. Month. Okay. So I don't, yeah, I've got a, a week before I have to pick. Yeah, you're more. proud of yourself that you read both of them? I'm really proud of myself. I've been doing really well with reading my shelves. Although, as you said, this isn't really reading my shelf because we just got it in the post. Yeah. But um, it was nice to get a little bit of fresh blood. Yeah, I just it? brought Bertie a cronk. coffee and a cronk that I bought earlier. Oh, oh they're Bert's um, favourite. I've got my soft jumper on. <gasps> yes! Do we like Bert's soft jumper? Oh. oh. <laughs> Super soft. It kind of blends with the surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go into the bedroom and leave you to be quiet because you're working. And I thought you might want to tell the story time family. <laughs> Hi, Pam. <laughs> what you were doing? I am proofreading a novel that someone that I am friends with, for, well, from the bookshop days, has written. And she's sent me the manuscript. And she's set me like some tasks to read it and to look out for certain things and see if it's working. So that's what I've been doing during half term. And I'm getting towards the end of it now. Yay! And it's maybe a book that you might even see on the shelves at some point in the future. Yeah. I'll leave you to it. Bye! Yes, I've got my new jumper on, and it's Dallas time. Woo! Um, we are on season uh, season eight, episode fourteen. This is called Odd Man Out. Pam searches for Mark, hoping he may still be alive. Mark Grayson, who um, Pam was engaged to. Um, Mainly because she felt sorry for him because he was he was had a terminal illness, and then he flew his plane into the sea, um, sort of committing suicide. May not have committed suicide, um, but there's been a sighting of him in the, the Caribbean, at like some kind of health spa, <laughs> and um, but we've just found out at the end of last episode that JR's behind it and he's just sending Pam off somewhere because he doesn't want her to get back with um, Bobby. So, brilliant storyline. Um, Bobby's also just been stood up at the altar by uh, Jenna Wade, by Priscilla Presley. 
um, because she's been kidnapped along with her child by her evil Italian ex. Can't remember his name. Um, so let's see what happens next, huh? Priscilla. What do you think of that? It's amazing. Hi. <laughs> Here's what's happening. Okay. Okay. I read two chapters of Outline by Rachel Kirst. Yeah, it's rubbish. I don't think I like it. No. Or, not that I don't like it, but I don't want to read a third chapter. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. Also, I saw Doris mm. read it all, and she, I don't think she loved it either, so I just thought, well... Well, she's done that for us. Then, she's read she? it, yeah. yeah. Doris read it, I don't need to. Yeah, it's the same as reading it. Yeah, so that one... I mean, I like the sound she was talking about how the second volume then, because the first volume is like um, almost like 10 different stories of people that this woman meets. And then you learn a little bit about the woman through the stories. Mm. And then the next volume kind of follows her story. Right. I'm not interested enough in it. No, I like the front cover. I don't like the front cover even. Right. So, okay. so that's, that's gone. Bye bye, Cass. Left at. See ya. Um, I picked up the collection by Nina Leisure, the Dick book. I've read the Dick book. Well, I had a little look, at, a little look at it, kind of. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I picked this up to have a little look. I was kind of considering reading it because I've been reading a bit of kind of contemporary fiction, a bit of slightly edgy lady fiction. Mm. That's what I mean. Right. The Atessa Moshveg crowd crowd yeah mm. so i thought this would maybe fit into it i read a little bit of it and i just thought no no so i love not... the cover i just love the yeah. cover and the book was a i'm sure it's kind of i mean you can these books i guess you know obviously this is written well as yeah as well and this is too yeah but then also that's not enough really not is enough. it not so we're gonna get rid of this one as well yes okay so what I am, oh, I did want to kind of briefly... Get us getting through our book, so... Yeah. Hmm. I did want to briefly update on How Not to Diet. Not that I've read any more, but because it's going to take me a long time to read. There was just a couple of things I wanted to say, because I know that, like, um, a couple of people were sort of interested in it. And the main thing that I wanted to say was that if you're someone who has had, like, eating disorders or a little bit sensitive around food, I don't think this is actually the book for you, because he's not very nuanced in how he's talking about food so it's very scientific very matter of fact so when he gives you his tips of like how to lose weight at the end which you know are kind of some of them are really helpful like um uh you know kind of eating more in the morning eating more mm -hmm. fiber he also recommends like weigh yourself twice a day oh. and like stuff like that i know is just really not helpful for yeah lots of people so yeah i just think it's one maybe to be a little bit wary of but um i'm still kind of finding it interesting yeah at the same time so that's that one just kind of wanted to say about that mm -hmm. and then the two books that i'm reading which i feel go together i decided to pick these up today mm -hmm. um so i've got california calling a self interrogation by natalie singer and this is about natalie who um, is Canadian, but then it is obsessed with California and then goes to live there. And it kind of has quite short little sections. Betty just <laughs> prompted me to do something with my hair. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. it. Let's just do a little ruffle now. One, um, 
yeah, lots of kind of little bits, and each section kind of starts with a little question at the top. Um, it's all right. <laughs> mm. And then also reading this from the Light Years by Chris Rush, yeah. which I felt like I had to have two on at the go because this is Bert's copy and your favourite book from last year. Last year, and I didn't want to get mine when I made my courgette sandwiches earlier. I didn't want to get <laughs> courgette on it. Which, when I have that thing of like, um, when Bert tells me I can read or listen to something, and then I have that slight panic, and then I usually accidentally damage it, even though I never, <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever damage my own stuff because yeah. I feel like there's the pressure. Yeah. So I know if I like ate my courgette with it, it would just fall. Yeah. I'd get courgette on the pages. Right. I, prefer, yeah. I kind of prefer that to this one, but I do like this one as well. I think okay. this is, yeah. Again, it's like, like you know like these books it's i like the writing style yeah um and and i will see how it goes yeah that's that's my update that's an update how's that that's wonderful any questions no questions um any life updates needed mm. how's your scarf working for you yeah i just put it on for this <laughs> <laughs> i haven't been wearing it all day I still haven't finished it, but I could still finish it tonight. I've got like 50 pages. This is Night Boat to Tangier. Um, so I don't think I've explained the plot to you yet. Um, it's about these two um, aging Irish gangsters. They're basically, they're waiting at this port for uh, it's sort of the boat to Tangier coming in. Um, and these boats just keep coming in and coming out and then it's sort of waiting to sort of see who's on the boats and it's got a very um, kind of waiting for Godot kind of feel to it it's, you know these two characters kind of having a dialogue and it feels like it could almost just be replaying itself over and over mm. again and in the meantime you get to sort of learn about their their pasts in Ireland and their travels and their exploits um, definitely it's a very sort of ex exaggerated writing style. Okay. Um, it maybe is kind of quite blokey in, in some ways. Mm. Um, I guess yeah, it's very Irish. So what it, does it, Kevin Barry look like? Does he look cute? He's a sort of a bit scruffy. Okay. Scruffy. Maybe we'll put a picture up. Yeah. Now I'm interested. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I think his first novel was called City of Bohane. Uh, so I'm interested to get to that one, having read you know, these two and enjoyed them. He's got a short story collection as well, I think. Uh, yeah, I like him. Um, even though it's sort of, you know, there's an element of it being seem a bit, seem, seeming a bit forced. Not forced, like um, that it's a construct, you know, like that it's it's just really good writing mm. and sometimes that takes you out of the story. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> We captured the essence. The essence of Bobby essence. with your super soft jumper. Yeah. yeah, are you all snug? Yeah. Yeah. We nice yeah. yeah. We had a nice day, didn't we? Yeah. Despite not getting a frying pan. <laughs>